How's it going? Uh, let's just pray to the Father. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you Father God for your word. I just ask that you please Lord speak unto us. Open our ears to hear your voice and please speak unto us and to his people Father God. Cover us all with the blood of Jesus Christ. Forgive us of all our sins and we forgive those who sinned against us and we just let them go out of our hearts. Father God, cover us and cleanse us as white as snow by the blood of Jesus Christ that is shed for our sins. Father God, I just ask that your Holy Spirit, Father God, be here with us as we ask, Lord, as we ask together, Father God, help us to hear your word from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Give you all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So yeah, recently um, I've been uh, uh, getting attacked by the devils because I also did something pretty uh, horrible in the Lord's sight. Uh, basically, uh, there's this sister in our church. Um, uh, she started arguing against gift of tongues, uh, and I was like, "Well, like you know, I've been teaching you for so long," and then she'd been listening to other uh, preachers, pastors, or her family members that says tongues is wrong, and so she's saying that she's never gonna pray in tongues, stop teaching about it, and kind of like being, you know, you know. I guess rude, right? So after she left, I was kind of mad. I was like, man, you know, I just want to go back to America, whatever, you know. I was like, why am I, you know, doing, what am I doing here? They don't even want to listen. Um, so anyway, uh, I started like praying and I just started like, Lord God, please, the oh Lord, you correct her, do something, correct her. And I was like, kind of like praying out of love. I started praying out of love and all of a sudden, I guess maybe, um, Lord didn't see that as good. Probably Satan was going against uh, me and saying that, oh, look at him, you know, look at him, accusing me, because he's an accuser of the brethren, accusing me to God and probably asking God to hand me over. So, which, you know, from that moment on, I started getting sick, very high fever and, and things like this, like all of a sudden getting cold, right? And, uh, Nothing really worked, you know, medic medicine, whatever, doesn't, doesn't work. You know, when you're really being chastised, you know, I guess, by God, nothing really works. You know, a lot of people say, well, demons just leave you, you know, when you just uh, cast them to go away. No, you know, part of it is because you're being punished and, uh, and justly because you're getting chastised. And God wants you to realize that there's something, fa some faults in you. You know, you might say, oh, well, I've just been cursed by generational curse. You know, because of my parents and my families and things like that. Well, that could be true. But if you truly love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, you would be spending a lot of time in prayer and seeking the Word of God. And you'd be spending a, a great deal of uh, love unto God and, and doing what He wants you to do. And in that way, God will set you free anyway. You know, you, you, you cannot blame uh, other people uh, for what they have done, all oh, my parents did me something wrong, or my whatever. Well, you can renounce their sins, and you can, you know, you yourself can stick to God with all your heart. But the thing is that you're not doing that. So, you know, first commandments off the golden commandment. So, first one is off. Second one is loving your neighbor as yourself. Well, you're probably not even doing that. So, please, it's, it's like you know, don't blame other people, the successful people. Do not blame other people. They take responsibility, whatever situation they're in, whether they're born poor or born without parents or born without something, you know, they don't blame the situation. They take control of it. And that's why they're successful. Okay, we as Christians need to stop putting a blame on your husband, your wife, or on your children, or the circumstances or the situation you're born with, or, or whatever. Stop taking the blame. It's time to start looking at the Word and start correcting yourself. If you want to be free from the demonic attacks. Okay, because the devil is used by God. And if you don't believe that, you look at Job. Okay, uh, read, read, read uh, Paul. Paul, who was being chastised by the devil. And God was sent, God actually used that devil so that he won't get prideful with the revelations that he had. Okay, so any anyhow, for that's that's another story. But anyway, don't it's, 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 don't don't blame other people for your trouble. So, anyways, I was wrong because uh, I I realized that while I was teaching, 
you know, I was sick, but I still went to, uh, uh, you know, do some English class where I'm evangelizing and then, you know, I was teaching uh, about Ecclesiastes chapter 1, which was the meaning of life, how everything is in vain, and how everything is useless. Well, uh, King, King Solomon had great wisdom, great wealth, great money, he had thousand wives, he enjoyed all the pleasures that he could ever enjoy. He looked for those pleasures and, and he, he would not stop his heart from enjoying and he, he did uh, everything and he didn't even have any wars because he was so wise he made, you know, he just married all the daughters of the other kings and just made family together. So basically he was having great trade and had great wealth and he was a very very successful king and this king who had everything basically is telling, telling you uh, that, you know, verse 2 is like, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher who is Solomon. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit had a man of all his labor which he take it under the sun? One generation pass away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also riseth, and the sun goes down, and hasteth to his place where he rose. The wind goes toward the south and turn about unto the north. It, it, it whirled about continually and the wind returned again according to his circus, circuits. All the river run into the sea and yet the sea is not full unto the place where it, whence the river come. They come again. It's just cycle again and again and again and again. All things are full of labor. Everybody's working, working, working hard on their own things. Man cannot utter it. This is, you know, the eye is not satisfied with seeing. People are always looking at things. The ears are always, you know, hearing things, but it's not satisfied. Keep on needing to hear more. Keep on needing to see more, hear more. And just, just what are these people doing? You know, it's just basically what he's saying. Okay? The thing that had been, which is, shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Everything was created by God. All these things that are the people are creating has been already in God's mind and already put out. You know, for example, computer was there, invented by people that was already copied our brain, uh, camera, copied our eyes, uh, whatever. All those things were already, you know, done. And it's being done over and over and there's nothing really new under the sun. Everything is being a repeated process. People have been working hard, working hard, working hard for centuries and what is left? You know, people have been enjoying, leaving pleasure, living the life of pleasure, 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 and what is left? When they die, even their memories all pass away as if nothing. You know, the things that you tasted yesterday, well, today you need to taste something good again. Okay? You need to continually feed it. And, and people studied like you yesterday. They did many things like you yesterday. They've been preaching, evangelizing, um, doing a lot of things. And today, you need to do it again and again. And, and he's like, you know, what is all this point of? It's like chasing after the wind. You know, if you really read this thing, you know, which you should read. Um, it's talking about how pointless is all this working and toiling and, and, and living a life of pleasure. What is left out of this? It's nothing, he's saying. It's like you're chasing after wind. It's nothing. And as I was teaching this to the students, uh, one student asked me, then what is the point of living? Okay, I, feel, I did felt she got also convicted. She's an unbeliever. But she felt convicted of her own life. You know, then what is all this point of living? And I was like, you know, well, if you really want to know, it's love. It's about love. It's about loving God. And loving the people so when you do charities and stuff you feel a little bit more value uh, because you feel there is a value in sharing the wealth with others okay if you just only live selfish it's really a vain thing you you're just wasting your time you're just all about yourself well your your life value is is, is the same as nothing okay but when you put love in there and when you you know give unto the poor when you uh, really live for them when you live for God. I mean when you love God when you love people That's where real value is and I told you know them about this and while I was teaching this I realized my own fault. I realized my own fault. Yeah, okay So I could have been right or I could have been wrong about the gift of tongues or teaching this 
you know, it's very certainly, you know, I could, what, whatever. It could be right or wrong, you know, point aside, why am I teaching this to people? What was the purpose of it? Wasn't it, God was basically telling me, wasn't it to love them? What is love? Wasn't it to be long-suffering with them? Kind with them? You know, wasn't it to, to, you know, take care of them with love? What is the point of you teaching this, all these things? Wasn't it for the point of love? Why are you evangelizing? For the point of love. Then why aren't you not doing it out of love? Why are you being harsh to them? Why are you asking God to, to, uh, to you know, correct them? You know, maybe using, I don't know, a punishment method or whatever to correct them. Why are you praying like this? This is not right before the sight of God. The whole point of uh, you doing the, even reading the Bible, gaining knowledge or whatever is for others. It's for the love so that you can care better for others. What is the whole point of living? What is the point of you enjoying stuff if there is no love involved? You're wasting your time. What is the point of getting a high, high education, getting a good job if it's not for the point of love? Then you're nothing, you know? As we know in uh, 1 Corinthians, right? Chapter 13, you know, it's like, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, even you speak the language of angels, and have not love, you become a sounding brass, a tinkling cymbal, you know? Even though you might be right, you know, what is the, why are you arguing? Don't argue. You could be right. You know, you could be right about everything, okay? But if you do not show them love, what is the point? Although you have the gift of prophecy and you understand all mysteries, if you're so smart, you have all the knowledge and all the wisdom, you know the future, you know the past, you know what's going to happen. But if you have no love, you're nothing. Even if you can cast out all demons, heal all the sick, open the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf, and then make the lame walk, uh, create mountains, and then move the mountains, or do whatever with the faith. With the great faith you have, even though you have that, you don't have love, you're nothing, right? What is this? Love suffers long. It suffers long with people. It's kind. It's, it doesn't envy. It does not puff itself up. So basically, if you are doing things and you're puffed up in a way, you have no love and therefore you're nothing. You're not of any value. You could be saving millions of people. But you're, you're puffed up, you're boasting and you're showing it to people, saying how great you are, uh, basically showing off. Oh, but you give glory to the God, you say, but you're showing off. You know, uh, what is the point? Okay, you're nothing. Okay, it's puffed up. Okay, if you, if you, if you're, if you're, if you, you know, evangelize greatly, show off the cross to the people, but you're, you're, you're hot-tempered, you're, you're short-fused short and you blow up on people, you get angry at people, you have no love. What is that? It's nothing. Okay? You, you do nothing. What is the point of when you envy something, when you're like seeking, you know, love does not behave rude. It does not seek its own. It's not selfish. What is the point? What is the point? Is this a number game? You know, what is all this point? Why are you doing this for? Love, okay, is not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It thinks no evil of them. You wish that God would just hit them and punish them and make them wake up. You know, that was thinking evil. And that was uh, me thinking evil. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have just, just really just blessed them and asked God to just open their eyes to see. But, but other than that, I should not ask God to correct them, you know. Maybe uh, that, that was out of an evil intention, out of evil. So I was like, oh, you want them to be corrected? Oh, well, let's see how if, how if I correct you. God was that. So what you sow, what you're going to reap. You asked me to correct them. Well, God saying, I will correct you. And through that sickness, I was really like chastised and I really found out my faults. And it was, it was great. It was great. Thank, thank God that, that God chastised me and to wake me up. 
you know, to, to continue to change me. And, uh, you know, love, you know, needs to bear all things, believe all things, and hope all things, endure all things. You, I should have been praying for them instead of that. Because all things was, you know, it's basically the devils were attacking through her to me. You know, basically, the demons were the, the actual, the real ones that are trying to trick me, to make me fall. But I took it upon her. You know, that's wrong. There should be anybody. You shouldn't be, you know, going against anybody. It could be brothers, sisters, whoever, unbelievers. They might spit on your face. They might say bad things to you. They may call you whatever names. You know, you shouldn't take it on them because actually it's the demons that are influencing their minds. Okay, snake is very sneaky. You don't see them. Really, they're in the dark. They, 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 they act like if they're not there, they're there. Okay, the devils are there. They bite you with the poison. They poison your mind with the thoughts of hate, thoughts of provoke, thoughts of, you know, whatever, you know, you just, you just dislike thing, disliking them. They're trying to make you not love. Okay, others. They make you to, to puffed up, be puffed up. They inject you with this poison of, you know, oh, wow, you're so great. You know, thinking in your mind, you're so awesome. You're just a man of God, woman of God. Wow, look at you. You know, God is really using you, you know, to do great miracles. What if, whatever, if you didn't do, you couldn't, God been using you to save billions of people. And you know what? If you don't have love, you're nothing. And don't get deceived. If, if, you, if you're puffed up, you, you are. You're already uh, uh, nothing. Food of the devil. Okay, because the devil was puffed up from the beginning. So he's saying, God is basically telling you, be perfect, even as your Father, which is imperfect. Matthew 5, 48, he's saying, be you perfect, be perfect. Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. You need to start making up your mind, you know, to be perfect. I'm not telling you, you know, perfect with, without sin or anything. You know, you'll make mistakes. You won't be able to be super perfect. What he's telling you in this context is be perfect in love. So if you go a little bit upwards from Matthew 5, 38, let's, let's read a little bit. It says, You have heard that it has been said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You know, if somebody takes your eye out, then take their eye out. If somebody breaks your tooth, break their tooth too. You know, it was like revenge. Okay? But Jesus says, I say unto you that you resist not evil. Don't resist evil. Don't resist evil people being evil done on you. Don't resist it. Okay, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, give him the left also. If they want to hit you, they want to take your cloak, uh, let them take, you know, your cloak also. Take If they want to take your cloak, let them take everything else. Okay? And don't resist them. Very hard to do, right? But God's saying, hey, you be perfect. Okay? And whosoever shall compel thee to go mild, go with him twain. If he wants to do use you, um, you know, do stuff for you, do double, do double for them, okay? But it looks like a very wasteful thing that, that well, well, why you just want me to go one mile, I'll just go one mile, why do I need to go two for him? He's saying, be you perfect as a child of God, okay? Give to him that ask you, and from him that would borrow from you, do not turn you away. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he make it his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send it rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the publicans, the tax collectors do that? Don't even evil people do that? They, they love also those who love them. I mean, that's just basic. Okay, it's like, you're not supposed to be basic. You're supposed to be better than that. Okay, be you therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You know, if somebody tells you to uh, move, then move. Okay? You might be like, wow, what does he not he doesn't own this place, he cannot tell me to move. You might be right. You might be right. But so God say, 
be perfect as he is. Okay. Um, you can remember who's this guy? Uh, Isaac. Okay, Isaac was digging a well in this place. And these people come along and say, hey, this is my land. Get out of here. And they take the well that he dug. So he digs another one. Okay, and the people come again. Hey, this is our land. You cannot be digging well here. And they take it away again. Isaac didn't get angry, didn't kill them, didn't hit them, didn't complain, didn't dig. No, he just dug another wall. You know, digging a well is not easy. You need to dig, like, dig all day long, sweat, sweat, sweat so hard, and you finally maybe hit the water spot and water pop out. I mean, it is a long, long, hard job. Okay? You might think, oh, well, I've been sweating here, and you might want to fight against them. You might want to create a war. I mean, you know what? Let's just, you know, ask my God to punish them or kill them or destroy them. But Isaac didn't do that, man. Isaac just simply dug another well, another well, another well, another well. Seven of them. Okay? He dug seven times because these people are just taking again and again and again. And you might say, this is not fair. This is not fair. That's why God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Because look at how, how meek Isaac was. Okay? He did not resist evil. He didn't resist evil. And you might say, well, it's unfair. So what? Yes, it is unfair. It could be unfair. Yes, you're right. So, let them take it. Let them take advantage of you. Take pity on them. Love on them. Well, it's not fair. Who cares? Receive the unfairness and receive the glory of God instead. Because in that day, you shall be glorified. You shall be rewarded unfairly large amount of things. Amen? The unfairness that you received, you shall receive basically a billion times larger, an unfair amount of reward. It would be very unfair. With the little thing that you lost, you've received unfair amount of great things in heaven. And it's so unfair. It's so unfair. Right? So receive the unfair. Okay? If they want to yell at you, don't yell them back. If they curse at you, don't curse them back. Be a child of love. Be a child of great goodness. If they do bad things, leave them to God. You pray for them. Huh? Don't need to go, go smack them on their cheek or rebuke them or do harsh things to them. You know, hey, that's not love. Uh, the, the people rejected Jesus. Right? And they rejected Him like, you know, get out of here. And the disciples were like, Jesus, look at them. Shall we call down fire like Elijah did? Like Elijah fire and burn them and kill them all? And Jesus said, Watch what you're saying, man. You don't know what spirit you're on. Your, your spirit, that, that thought, is of the devil. Don't let the devil inject you with those hate thoughts. That is not of God. You be a child of God. Love them. Bless them. They reject you. They reject me. Don't worry. Okay, but you, you yourself, don't turn evil. You yourself, don't become wicked in my sight. You're my child. Don't, don't be like them. Okay, don't look them down. Don't think they are fools. Don't hate them. Don't curse them. Don't, don't be like, oh, those people are so stupid. Don't, don't say those things. That is already of an evil heart. Love is, love does not think evil. If you already think that way, you don't have love. And you're going against the command of God. So, don't do that. You know, you follow me. You just look at Jesus. And don't act upon yourself. Okay? Let them take advantage of you. You just fight the devil. To resist the devil, the temptations, and he will flee from you. He's right now giving you temptations. Don't fall. Okay? Amen? Let's pray unto the Father. Thank you, Father God.
Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word. Father, let's be, help us to be perfect as you're perfect. Help us to determine today from now on, I will want to be, I want to be perfect as you are. Help me to resist evil thoughts. Help me to be loving towards one another. Help me to just receive when people do bad things to me. Help me to, just to res resist those things. I just ask that you please, the Lord, bless us here. Each one of us spiritually, physically, financially. And uh, help them to realize the truth and come to the truth. Father God, let, let us not stay in the vain things that is nothing. But help us to truly live in the truth. Loving one another and loving God with all our heart, all our soul, all our might. With everything that we are. Help us to love you and to love one another as you loved us, Father. With the life-giving love. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the praise and glory in your name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you guys.